Welcome to Off the Page, the show where we talk with Colorado authors to get the story behind the story. I'm Stacy McKenzie, a librarian here at Mamie Dowd Eisenhower Public Library in Broomfield. Later in the show, we're going to be talking with Sue Allegreza with her book about Billy Raccoon. But first, I'm so happy to have Natasha Wing with us. Hello, Natasha. Hello. And we are going to talk about your book, Fresh Snow. But you have a lot of books, don't you? Yes, and this isn't all of them. Wow. <laughs> I've been at this for 24 years. This is a wonderful collection, 24 years. Mm -hmm. What brought you to be a children's author? Well, I actually went to school at Arizona State and I studied um, advertising. Okay. So I got a BS in advertising and um, I did it for a little bit. I worked in an advertising agency and then it got a little bit boring and not as creative as I wanted it to be. And um, so I decided to do children's books because I always loved the combining of words and pictures. Uh -huh. And my dear husband gave me a year. He said, well, give it a shot for a year and if you if it works, you can you can go and be a children's book author. If it doesn't, go get go back and get a job. And it worked. It worked. I mean, look, Thanks, it worked. Yes, thankfully. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the first book you ever got published. Um, that's Hippity Hop Frog on Top. Uh huh. And um, it's my mom's favorite because the um, the art is really beautiful. Uh -huh. But it was actually inspired by another book that I was reading, another children's book, and that tends to happen to me, I'll be reading a book and then thinking of other ideas. And uh -huh. so that one, I was uh, reading another book, I saw a picture of a frog, and I felt sorry for him because he couldn't jump over the fence. And so I wanted to um, do a counting book of 10 frogs so they can pile high enough to see over a fence. Oh, that's fabulous. I so know, it's a it's counting a, book. It's a counting book. Wonderful for the young ones learning to count. Mm -hmm. And it's a tall book, so I'm imagining we get to see the frogs all stacked up yes, at some point. Yes, yes. And there's some rhyme in it. I tend to gravitate towards rhyming books. It's a beautiful, big book. Thank Congratulations you. on that one. Thank and then you. all those that came um, talking about fresh snow. Tell us about fresh snow. Well, I now that I live in Colorado, um, our winters are very long, so <laughs> I wanted to write a book that celebrated all the winter sports uh -huh. and also encouraged kids to try different sports in the winter and especially snowboarding. So it's basically my celebration of winter. I love it. And yeah. what better place to have that than Colorado? Yeah. So that's perfect. Yeah, I just went skiing today. So. <laughs> and what age range would you say fresh snow is is good for? We always talk about that with children's books. I know. I well, I say three to eight. Uh huh. Um, there's a movement to try to get kids to snow start snowboarding sooner. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm trying to target the younger kids. Uh huh. But I'd say three to eight. That's terrific. Yeah. So all us Colorado parents can go out and get fresh snow yeah. to get our kids in, excited about snowboarding. Mm -hmm. When I was looking at your huge collection of your other books, mm -hmm. one of my favorite ones was the series that you've got mm -hmm. called The Night Before. Mm -hmm. And you go through all of these different events and holidays mm -hmm. where you talk about the night before. How did you get the idea for that wonderful series? Well, um, I, you know, when I was a kid the night before Christmas was big you know it was always popular and I um, every kid can't wait you know can't wait for Santa Claus to come well I love the Easter Bunny uh -huh. so I thought well there's got to be other kids out there like me who can't wait for the Easter Bunny to come uh -huh. and um, so I just took the Christmas story and twisted it into a Easter story uh -huh. and it was only supposed to be a one book kind of situation and then my editor really loved it and she said why don't we do Halloween, Thanksgiving and it kept growing mm -hmm. and then it went from holidays to school subjects and then big events in kids lives so. My favorite one mm -hmm. is The Night Before a New Pet. Oh yes. How does that, how, what is that title? The a, Night Before the New Pet. The that's, Night Before the New Pet. That's coming out in February. Oh yes. it's coming out. Oh, yes. Great. What happens the night before the new pet? Well uh, the family it. is preparing for a puppy. Oh. So of course they're you know getting all the stuff, the toys and everything, and Dad is saying just one pet, you know, because the little girl's like, can I have this? Can I have this? A horse and a puppy and this? He's like, nope, just one. So they go down to the um, the shelter and a little kitten steals Dad's heart too. Oh. So they come home with a puppy and a kitten. Oh, I know. I love it. I love that <laughs> series. It's just a great idea and. 
really terrific series. Thank you. Um, and my other favorite one, I have an art history background, mm -hmm. was about Joseph Albers, mm -hmm. or Joseph Albers. Mm -hmm. How did you choose him? Because he's your only biography right now, is so that far. correct? So yes. far. Yes, um, there's one in progress, oh, so good. yes. How um, did you pick him for your first one? Well, when I was growing up in Connecticut, he lived down the street from me. Oh. And I know. And so as a kid, I didn't know he was famous. <laughs> you know, I just saw him as a, a man who walked up and down our street and he stopped and said hello to our dog Nikki who was a German shepherd. And um and then we got a Christmas card from him and his wife and my mom actually framed it and she never framed anybody else's Christmas card. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, what's the deal with this one? He's like, well, he's, a, he's an artist, you know. So when I grew up and started going to museums, I went to a museum and saw one of his paintings. You know, he did the homage to the square and I looked at the name of who did it and it said Joseph Albers. And I said, wait a minute, he was my neighbor. <laughs> and so that kind of got the wheels turning and then when I became an author, then I did more research about him. And we also have that book in, in Chinese. Chinese. Chinese, so yes. this book has been translated in Chinese. Yes. How does it feel to have one of your books translated into Chinese? You've got another one in Spanish? It's really cool just <laughs> knowing that people all over the world can uh -huh. read about him now, but I cannot read it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> the symbols are beautiful, but yeah. I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> so. I have to also ask you about your illustrations. Mm -hmm. um, all of your books are beautifully illustrated. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the Albers biography. How did you work with an illustrator on that one? Well, typically they do not let the authors and the illustrators work together. Mm -hmm. um, so the art director chose, um, chose the illustrator and she actually lives in Canada. So that I didn't ever meet her, but she's, you know, she knew who Joseph Albers was because she studied art too. Okay. And she was excited to get the, the assignment. And um, because it was a biography and because she knew I had a connection to him, I did send photos, but the rest you just leave up to them and let them, you know, create without me influencing her. That's incredible. And yeah. is that how it worked for most of your other books? Um, just about every other one except for Go to Bed Monster. We, it was more of a concept book, so we wanted to show the editor how the concept was going to work. So we, we actually did a little dummy first uh -huh. and sent it, the text and the illustrations in together. But I never met her. You know, we weren't face to face, we just did it through emails. Okay. Yeah. So you guided that one a little bit mm -hmm. more. Yeah. That's that's wonderful because not having that element not really known and to have such a wonderful product. You have to trust. Yes. And um, they, you know, uh, people always ask, you know, how come you don't get to work with your illustrator? Mm -hmm. And one editor had told me the reason is because when I'm creating my text, I don't have an illustrator sitting over my shoulder saying, you know, that should actually be a poodle, not a, you know, not yeah. a German Shepherd, or you know, the blonde. It should be blonde hair instead of brown. So they're not influencing me, so I shouldn't be sitting over their shoulder influencing them. Interesting. So I, I respected that. That's wonderful. Yeah. And have you just been extremely pleased with everything, or have, yeah. has anything shocked you when you get them back? Not shocked. There's just one that I wasn't crazy about. Uh huh. And I don't know if I want to mention what one. You don't one have it. to. Okay, with there's all one of like, these, eh. no one will know which one. Because no. I think they're all fabulous. They're they're wonderful. And actually, this one I did self-publish, so I worked okay. with Illustrator the the entire way, Chandra okay. Schultz, and she lives in, in Fort Collins too. Uh -huh. So that was a great process for me. Okay. But typically, they live in New York or you know some like Canada, like uh -huh. I said. So I never get to meet them. So what I, a process. I love it though. I, I, I it, love talking about the process. Um, I, you know, I, in my mind I have certain images because mm -hmm. I also think visually, but I really enjoy what they come back with because I know I would never be able to produce it. Yeah. So. You're the writer. Yeah. You're, you're not the artist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully um, my words inspire them though. <laughs> Well, um, Natasha, if we go to your website, what type of information can we find there? Um, well, about my school visits and okay. library visits. Okay, great. Um, often uh, Colorado schools will contact me and, and want to have a real live 
author come, which is exciting. I also do Skypes, which I, I actually love because they can be very um, interactive and very casual. Oh, wow. And I let the kids kind of lead which way the the uh, the session is going to go, and um, and my husband usually hears a lot of laughter coming from that room because I'll <laughs> either hold something out and then you hear that kindergarten laughter is like ah ha 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 so so it's just really fun and sometimes my little kitty she'll come into my ah. office and they get to see my cat so I really like skyping oh how fun to yeah. make that connection with a with a classroom through Skype yeah and it sounds like you're successful doing that I I love doing it. I do um, give away two free a month okay so um, I have teachers contact me and book those up so I that's kind of my contribution back to the schools oh that's marvelous yeah. so if people wanted to see if they could get one of those freebies they could come to your website Go to my website okay. and contact me yes wonderful yes Natasha when you go speak to groups of children either in person or on Skype what types of things can we expect from that my main goal is to humanize the person behind the name on the front of the book because uh -huh. um, I remember when I was a kid no authors ever came to our school mm -hmm. so I didn't ever think it was a possibility of something I can do when I grew up mm -hmm. so I like to go in there and tell the kids you know I'm a real person I here's what my life is like and I also happen to write oh, that's so great. that's my main goal and then the other is just to get them excited about reading and mm -hmm and um, maybe inspire new little authors. There's usually more hands that raise at the end when I ask, who wants to be an author? <laughs> I, I do, I do. <laughs> so, I, I hopefully I make it uh, sound like a fun job. It so. sounds like fun. Yeah. I, I think it sounds awesome. It's a great <laughs> job. Um, so tell me about uh, Team Up for Literacy. So this is like taking that another level up with another yes. author? Yes, yes. Um, Teresa Funk and I, do school school visits separately, but um, we were finding that some schools needed an author for K through eight or uh -huh. K through six, and I only go up to three because my mostly picture books. Right. So um, we decided to team up, and then I would take the little kids, and she would take the four through six or the four through eight, and then we would team up together and talk to the kids who are interested in writing. Uh -huh. So it's just kind of like a not a two for one exactly, uh -huh. but just to cover the whole school so that everybody gets to see an author. And you've already done some of these presentations? Mm -hmm. And how'd they go? They went really well. It's just really well yeah. received, I imagine. Yeah, and um, we had a third grade class who got both of us, and then those are the kids that really wanted to know more specifics about writing. Uh -huh. So that's when they were able to ask more questions about the process. and and they really enjoyed it. That's wonderful. Yeah, it was fun for us too. Well, since you mentioned process, I'd love mm -hmm. to ask you, how do you come up with so many ideas? Oh. Are you just bombarded <laughs> all the time? And do yeah. you ever have a time when you're struggling with an idea? Mm. No, I don't have trouble coming up with ideas. I have trouble with deciding which ones to develop. Okay. Um, because there are so many, and that's the thing that gets me excited is mm -hmm. the spark of the idea and then I try to carry it through as far as I can until I run out of spark yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes I have to put it away and come back to it or else I just have to say that wasn't the right one mm -hmm. but the ideas are not the problem it's the editing and the oh. making it come to the fruition to the very end uh -huh. so um, yeah I have I did um, what they do uh, picture book idea for, uh, for 30 days you know you do a you come up with an idea for 30 days in a uh, row and oh, wow. I had no problem coming up with ideas and then I looked at this list and went oh no what, now what do I have to develop yeah, <laughs> and I got excited pick? but yeah. then I get uh, you know I kind of work on many projects uh -huh. at the same time because of that oh There's that's too exciting many. I know when you're talking to y kids young mm -hmm. kiddos about who are aspiring writers mm -hmm. what's one piece of advice that you find yourself giving them um well, I, I really do encourage them to read. I mean, it sounds cliche, but because I read, that's where ideas come from, and then I get to learn new vocabulary. I get to learn how other people put sentences together. I, I get to see um, you know, different worlds and different characters. So it really does stem from reading. Mm -hmm. um, so I really say, you know, sometimes it does sound like it's work, but you have to do it for pleasure, too. 
good. Yes. And I could tell you enjoy this. It's just it's just great work. And so I have to ask, what is your next project? Is, is it the biography <laughs> you said is coming or? Well, there's one in um, the illustration stage right now and it's okay. about Jackie O. And wow. I know, I'm, I was kind of intimidated at first to write about her, but she actually was instrumental in saving um, the Grand Central uh, Terminal in, in New York City. Uh -huh. So she was all about preservation. And so I wanted to, encourage kids to look at the old buildings around them and think maybe there's somebody who actually oh. fought for that building. So that's the next one that's coming out in 2017. Oh, that is I exciting. Know, I, I love that <laughs> topic. Yeah. How did you ever come up with that? Well, my um, agent at the time lives lived in New York City or she worked in New York City. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, Grand Central Terminal is a oh, big yeah. landmark there. And so she had heard a little nugget about that. She she planted the bug in my ear, and I just ran with it. Oh, that's because Jackie, you know. <laughs> how is Everybody it that Jackie? O. How is it that you said Grand Central Station and a train shows up? Oh, <laughs> that's fascinating. How often that's do they come awesome. by? <laughs> Not very often. Okay. Not very often. No, that's, that's funny. funny. Natasha. Thank you so much for coming on the show and bringing all of your wonderful books. Uh, next time we have you back, which maybe we'll have you back for the Jackie so. O book. That would be fabulous. That would be cool. We'll just stack more up. We'll just keep stacking them up for yeah. you. We'll make room. I'll Thanks have more again. Button. Thank you for inviting me. You bet. Thanks. Join us after the break when we'll be talking with Sue Allegreza. Where are you? I'm just a few minutes away. What medications do you take? I can help you if I have the information. Seconds count. What if you could provide us with life-saving information before an emergency? Now you can. It's free, private, and secure. Visit smart911.com to create your safety profile. Help us help you. Welcome back. I'm happy to have Sue Allegreza on the show today. Hi, Sue. How are you? Hi. We are so happy to be talking about Billy Raccoon and his Grand Colorado Adventure. Before we talk about Billy, let's find out what you do whenever you are not writing children's books. I sew a lot. Uh -huh. I do other paintings uh -huh. and drawings. Um, we square dance a lot, oh, and great. so I make all of our square dance outfits. I see. And that's mainly what we do. <laughs> that that sounds great. That sounds like a bunch of great stuff it to is. do. So let's talk about Billy. Introduce us to Billy Raccoon. Billy Raccoon um, is a curious little uh, raccoon. He's always wanted to know what was outside his mountain valley. And one day he decided to leave and go explore wherever his little feet took him. He ran all over the state of Colorado talking to the animals about the sights they see, mm -hmm. like the Georgetown Loop train, the sand dunes, clear out onto the eastern plains through the national grasslands. Uh, my book has all of the state symbols, mm -hmm. national and state parks. How old is Billy the raccoon? Is he a young raccoon? He's a young raccoon. He's a young raccoon. So but he doesn't can, age. <laughs> he doesn't age. No, that's good. That's nice in the book. Yes. To, to not age. So he's, he's clever, like a lot of readers. What age group would you say is best for this book? Well, I know fourth graders are studying uh, Colorado history. Okay, great. And geology. Uh -huh. or gra geology. Um, geography. Geography yeah. is the word I want. And um, they learn a lot of things that are included in the book. Perfect. Okay, so great for fourth graders. Yes. To learn a lot about Colorado history. But anybody of any age, I've got some little bitties that mm -hmm. just have to have it read to them every night. And some adults have learned things they didn't know. Well, I really enjoyed it. And Thanks. one of the things I enjoyed the most was the illustrations. 
and you illustrated the book also, so you are author and illustrator of the book. I am. That is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> and I want to point out that Billy is on your lapel, mm -hmm. so he's you even illustrate uh, jackets. So that's I paint on everything. <laughs> you paint on every <laughs> surface. Uh -huh. um, is Billy something that you like to draw and paint before you decided to write about him? Yes, he was. Uh, uh, I think I put him together in uh, the late 90s, but my pen and inks I started drawing in uh, 1982. Oh, okay. Billy's little brother is one of them, and the bunny. Uh -huh. And um, I've just always done them, and I had to do very few for the Colorado book. Oh, so, so you already had so many of them. I did. Oh, that's I, made, I had a greeting card line and oh. still do. Oh. And uh, make more of them all the time. And um, so I had, I had a lot of pen and ink drawings And available. so how did you decide, how did you get to where we are today with a whole book and one that you illustrated completely? How did this all come to pass? I had a lot of drawings in my pen and inks uh -huh. and I was taking a um, Photoshop class in my oh. Adobe series that I did at Red Rocks. Uh -huh. I did a multimedia and, and graphics design class wow. okay. series, uh -huh. I guess it would. And um, she said that for our final project, we could choose from several. And one was write a children's book. So here I am. Wow. So out of a class from Red Rocks mm -hmm. and your drawings before, you have a fully completed children's book. It only took 10 years. It only took 10 years. <laughs> I didn't know where to go or who to talk uh -huh. to or what to do uh -huh. to get it put together. Okay. But I tried. Well, and that brings up another question I want to ask you. I know that you are associated with a wonderful organization mm -hmm. called SEPA. Tell me about your involvement with SEPA and how they helped you put the book together. Okay. Um, SEPA is um, Colorado Independent Publishers Association and they have everybody you would ever need every company from uh, editors to authors to printers phot photographers and they all want to help you it, which is so wonderful they don't want to keep their uh, part secret they want to give it to you mm -hmm. or sell it but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, they just really want to help. Mm -hmm. And I found all of my necessities to put the book out uh, through them. They're just a wonderful group. They are. Yeah. They really are. I've been to a few meetings mm -hmm. and have really enjoyed uh, their offerings. It's and, and they're a great group of people, too. Yes. Yeah. It's a very large group, it's actually. It's wonderful. And people could go to the website and find more ab about that. Yes, they can. SEPA, if they want to find out that. SEPABooks.com. That'd be wonderful. Let's get back to talking about cute little Billy. <laughs> I have to ask you, which do you prefer or which was harder for you, the writing or the illustrations? Definitely the writing. Okay. Mm. The drawing is my fun. Right. You've been doing that for years. Yes. And so how did you find um, your voice? How did you find the story for this? What made you decide to write about him having adventures? Well, I just started wandering around Colorado uh -huh. one way or the other and my editor um, helped me uh -huh. put more direction on it and technical information that we had to dig out and it was just really an interesting process and educational. And how did you choose the exact places? Did you did you have to come up with more for the book or did you have to weed out some? Cause you I had, had to so weed out yeah. some. Colorado's pretty great, huh? A children's picture book is supposed to be only 32 pages. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of places in uh -huh. there. So. Yeah. So we had to weed down to some of the, we the did. best ones the best. in Colorado. Well, not necessarily the best <laughs> ones, but we had to weed down. So the book is a, a children's book. It's mm -hmm. really great. I loved some of the things that you also included in the back like some questions to add for maybe a children's <laughs> book group, and also a list of websites where uh, people could go to find more content. Mm -hmm. Was this your idea to put this, and was the editor's? It was mine. Uh -huh. I uh, started the questions uh, to intrigue the 
children to go back and count how many hummingbirds there are, because there are, are uh, almost one ad per page. Okay. And uh, some animals aren't uh, talked about. He didn't talk to them, they're just there. Mm -hmm. And things like that. Uh -huh. And then I decided, well, you gotta give them the answers. Yeah. So I started with a page of answers, uh -huh. and then I did the uh, thumbnails, uh -huh. and then I finally added the websites, which are just simple Colorado State websites in National Geographic, if the children are allowed to go there and use the computer. I love that link to the technology, but especially that the kids can learn a lot more about right. the topic of your, of your book. It's wonderful. So, um, so if we go to your website, what types of things will we find out there? Well, you'll find out more about um, some of the things that are in the book and some of the things that aren't in the book. Okay. Um, they, I've added pages, added information about um, places that aren't in the book mm -hmm. and, or just mentioned slightly mm -hmm. and uh, so they can find out more. Wonderful. And now, going back to SEPA a little bit, mm -hmm. um, they have some awards called the Evie Awards. Right. And you had several Evie Awards I bestowed did. on your book. Tell us about some of the different awards that this book has won. My book won um, first place for um, illustrations, second place mm -hmm. for um, the layout and design, and third place for the cover design. Wow. I got uh, the fourth one, which was just being nominated, ah. and uh, for the book itself. Mm -hmm. That's that's really wonderful. And how did you feel? This is your first children's book. It is. How must it make you feel to win awards for your very first book? Totally speechless. Totally speechless. I did. They had me come up to say thank you and <laughs> receive my award. I could say thank. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual. You said read the book, read the book. <laughs> That's <laughs> fabulous. So um, this is, your book is about um, Billy Raccoon's Grand Colorado Adventure. Where is Billy going next? Billy is going to go wander around Wyoming. He's going to go to Wyoming. He is. And so since you had so many pictures ready for the Colorado book, do you have pictures already of Wyoming, or are you going to have to start drawing? I've drawn some, and I probably will fill in with more drawings. Okay. Um, Wyoming is so underestimated, uh -huh. under known about, uh -huh. um, that I, I've driven through it a million times. And I didn't realize that there were so many educational, geological, historical, things up there and through the research for the book I found out a lot. <laughs> oh that's fun. It was surprising. So you have to do a lot of road trips and do a lot of more drawings and then we'll get to see Billy go to Wyoming. Right. We have um, a, a map here that will be in the Wyoming book mm -hmm. so it's a little preview. Right. Really exciting and so we can't wait for that book. Sue, thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. on the show and sharing your book about Billy, and we can't wait for him to go to Wyoming and tell us all about Wyoming. Thank you. You bet. I'd like to thank the authors that I had on the show today, Natasha Wing with her book Fresh Snow and all of her other books, and of course Sue Allegreza with her book about Billy Raccoon and his grand Colorado adventure. Check your local libraries for the books that we've talked about on today's show, and join us for more next time on Off the Page.